people talking about rotator cuff injuries is it's become one of these phenomena that's becoming increasingly common where uh, just regular everyday people feel comfortable using medical terminology uh, just throughout the course of their everyday lives. You hear people talk about rotator cuffs. Uh, a few days ago, I, I had to actually kind of give a little smile, a little chuckle inside when I heard one of my patients casually refer to his "quote unquote" rotor cuff, uh, and it was you know as he's kind of laugh inside at at, at him. But uh, then after thinking about it, I realized. You know what? I don't. I really don't even know that much about the rotator cuff. I mean, what exactly does it consist of? What's what's its purpose? What what does it mean when you tear a rotator cuff? What are you actually tearing? Um, and why does it seem that you know strong, healthy athletes are the ones who are always prone to injury? Um, so I decided to do a little bit of research, and and actually, as an unexpected side result, I've I've uh, gotten better at my ability to visualize the different components of the shoulder girdle, especially uh, when I'm doing something like a, a scapular Y view or an, or an axillary uh, x-ray of the shoulder. Uh, so anyway, what, I what exactly is the rotator cuff? Uh, very simply, it's four muscles that hold the shoulder joint in place, and they also assist in abduction of the shoulder as well as internal and external rotation of the shoulder. Uh, the four muscles that comprise the rotator cuff are called supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres main, uh, I'm sorry, teres minor, and subscapularis. Uh, all four muscles originate on the scapula and and they insert on on the humeral head or humeral neck. Uh, the supraspinatus originates in the supraspinous fossa, which supraspinous means that it's supra above or superior to the spine of the scapula so it originates on the supraspinous fossa uh, passes underneath the acromion and it inserts on the upper part of the greater tubercle of the humerus uh, and this this muscle prevents the humerus from dislocating inferiorly and it also assists a little bit in abducting the arm uh, infraspinatus which originates below or inferior to the uh, infraspinous, uh, the the spine, the originates in the infraspinous fossa uh, below the spine of the the scapula, and it inserts on the middle part of the greater tubercle. Uh, infraspinatus is this is actually the main external rotator of the humerus. Uh, teres minor also acts as an external rotator, but not as strong as infraspinatus. A uh, teres minor originates from the middle part of the lateral border of the scapula, and it inserts on the lower part of the greater tubercle of the humerus. And then last, and this is the only rotator cuff muscle that doesn't insert on the greater tubercle, is subscapularis. Subscapularis originates sub or below the scapula on the underside of the scapula in the subscapular fossa it crosses the shoulder joint and it inserts on the lesser tubercle here uh, this is a pretty strong internal rotator uh, now even though we talk about the insertion points of these muscles as four separate joints in reality you look at it in the living body it's actually it doesn't look quite like this it's not really four separate specific points um, reality, in reality all, all the tendons kind of come together to form this sheath that covers and stabilizes the top and sides of the glenohumeral joint and it's this sheath of tendons that is known as the rotator cuff um, so the main focus of this little video is the anatomy of the rotator cuff uh, rather than injury but uh, really I mean I, you can't talk about the rotator cuff without saying at least something about injuries so feel free to comment on my webpage here at ihavexrayvision.com at the bottom of this article that I'm going to write as well uh, feel free to comment if you have more to add or just uh, comment on the end of this video if you have more to add about injuries but uh, just briefly rotator cuff injuries uh, they can come about through single traumatic incidents, but more often they're the result of wear and tear, especially in people over age 40 uh, who have spent a lot of time subjecting their arms to years of repetitive overhead throwing motions like uh, baseball pitchers, tennis players, football players, quarterbacks especially, um, and then according to Wikipedia, really seriously, according to Wikipedia, Nintendo Wii players also have... <laughs> 
rotator cuff injuries. Uh, really, virtually anybody who spends a good amount of time doing work overhead repetitively. Uh, the rotator cuff muscles, they're primarily for stabilizing the shoulder joint. Uh, they're not really designed to be you know, workhorses, powerhouses like the deltoid and trapezius and latissimus dorsi or the pectoralis major. Uh, the main, these are the main movers of the upper arm and shoulder. Um, but repetitive overhead movement puts strain on the smaller, deeper rotator cuff muscles, especially near their insertions on the humeral head. So that's the rotator cuff. Be careful. <laughs> and uh, please leave some comments. Thanks a lot.